Today I'm going to show you how to publish MQTT data from a WAGO controller to Amazon Web Services. In this example, I have a WAGO PFC200 controller that's connected to the internet in the Amazon IoT core. I'm using MQTT to send the data from the PFC to the AWS core. I'm also using a WAGO Modbus TCP coupler with a power measurement module. The code assist projects I'm using in this demo are free samples that come from WAGO, both for MQTT and power measurement modules. I'll go ahead and leave the links to those sample projects in the description. To start, I've created an AWS account and I'm using an IoT core. AWS makes it really easy to create a thing to publish data to, as well as create policies and certificates for security. To get started, I'll click on all devices, things, and the first thing I'll do is create a new thing. I'm just going to follow the defaults here. For my thing name, I'm going to say Wago PFC 200 and click next. This will also prompt me to create a set of certificates for this device. So I'm going to leave auto generate a new certificate and click next. The other thing I'll need to do is create a policy. So by clicking on that button, I'm going to open up a new window to create this policy, naming it Wago PFC 200. Here I'm just going to allow uh, all policy and IoT actions, so to do that I'm going to enter a star into the action and policy resource. In the web browser I open up a new tab in order to create this policy, so what I'm going to need to do is go back to my original tab where I was starting to create my AWS thing and click create. When I click create thing I'm going to have a new window pop up that's going to show me how I can download my certificates and keys. I'll need to grab the device certificate the public key, private key, as well as the Amazon root CA1. Once I have all of my policies, keys, and certificates created, I'll need to link them together. So I'm going to go to Security, Certificates, click on the certificate I just created, and say Attach Policy. Here's where I'm going to select my WAGO PFC200 policy. Now I'm going to move over to the web-based management of the device. To get here, I type in the IP address of the device into the web browser and use my credentials to log in. The cloud connectivity configuration is set under Configuration and Connection 1. I'll start by enabling Connection 1 and making sure I have Amazon Web Services selected for the cloud platform. I'll need to go back to my IoT core to find the host name. This can be found under the settings, and I'm looking for my endpoint. So here I can see that's my unique endpoint. Go ahead and copy this and paste this into the host name. I'm also going to enter the client ID here, and I'm going to name it the same thing as my thing from AWS. Next, I'm going to add my certificates and keys that I generated in AWS. Here, I'm going to use WinSCP, a free utility, to transfer the certificates and keys over to the PLC. I'll just need to use the IP address and the root username and password to log into the device. Now that I'm logged in, I can just follow down from the root directory, and I'm looking for ETC, SSL, and certs. Here's going to be where I put these keys and certificates. In the left-hand pane of WinSCP, I've just navigated to the Downloads folder, and all I need to do is drag and drop these keys and certificates over into my search directory on the PLC. Now for my CA file. I'm going to follow the path etc ssl certs and type in amazon root ca1.pem. Uh, I'm going to copy that same path for the certification file. And this is really long, but it's okay just to copy it. So I'm going to go to my file explorer and just go ahead and copy that name of the file and paste it into the web based management. Again, I'm going to do the same thing for the key file and point this to my private key. So I'm going to copy the path and then go to the file and copy the full file name over. Now that I have all my details entered, I'm going to click Submit, and I see that I need to do a reboot of the controller for these changes to take effect. When the controller boots up again, it's going to open up a web-based management page. I'm just going to log in and check the connection to the cloud. So I'm going to navigate back to Configuration, Cloud Connectivity, and under Status, I can now see that I'm connected. From here, I'm going to move over to Codasys. This is a combination of two sample projects provided by WAGO. One for reading power measurement information data from a 750-494, and one for publishing MQTT data. So the example you're seeing here, I'm grabbing the voltage, current, and frequency from the power measurement module, 
and using the MQTT publish function block. In this case, I have a trigger set up to publish the data once every second, and I'm publishing to the topic V2.0 devices WAGO PFC 200. To download the project to the controller, I'm gonna click on my test device, which is a PFC 200, type in the IP address here, and it's gonna ask me for credentials to log in. I'm just gonna use admin and the admin password. Once I'm connected, I can click online, log in, to download the project to the controller. With the project downloaded and running, I can go ahead and view online values of things happening in the PLC. Here we can see I have the value for voltage, current, and frequency that are updating and reading that data from the Modbus coupler. Back to Amazon, and I'm gonna test my connection now. So I'm gonna to go to MQTT test client, and I'm just gonna use the pound symbol as the topic filter. This is essentially the wildcard to read anything that's publishing data to this IoT core. Sure enough, I can now see my voltage, current, and frequency coming across, and I see those values updating about every second. Thanks for watching.